Hi, hello, how have you been? I hope everything is just fine. Well, guess what? I found my first digital art piece work that I did about three years ago when I finally managed to get the cheapest Vacom graphical tablet that I could ever purchase. And at the time I was, I know, shocking, a really big fan of the game Witcher. So this is the first digital artwork that I made and as you expected, it's pretty shit. <laughs> I mean, look at it, it's so uh, boring and it doesn't have any character, it's just so meh. Plus it doesn't even look like Geralt itself, it doesn't look anything like Gary, our favorite metrosexual fruitcake. It just is bland, boring, the background is pretty, pretty, really pretty bad. Let's just let's just get into it. I, I kind of switched up the game <laughs> because it was just such a boring pose, right? He was just standing and looking. There was no emotion whatsoever and the first thing I had to do was to um, readjust the proportions of the body and, you know, make it look a bit more interesting. Therefore, I made him look sideways. But this time I was also trying to do a little bit, you know, of an ambiance. So I made it a, a night scene because the first one didn't really work with the colors, just too much green. It didn't even seem like a forest. It just looked like a postcard that was made by a two year old for his grandma for her 17th birthday. Um, I don't know why I had to get that specific with it, but whatever. I found it like a really nice challenge to have a nighttime effect. I just basically painted over my whole uh, painting, drawing, because, you know, I couldn't use it for anything and it didn't look like uh, Gary at all, so I just, you know, picked a couple of skin tones, picked a couple of, you know, primary tones and uh, just just drew it. it my first... Uh, drawing didn't help at anything except at just being there. <laughs> you know, it was like a nice little collage that I could use as a guide, but it just didn't help me at all. So, you know, I just, just smashed it out of the park by doing it from zero and cranking it up to a hundred. <laughs> now, I gotta say, it was really, 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 really frustrating to do this piece, mainly because I never drew a piece in the night time and therefore I thought it would be a really nice challenge to do a piece that is like, you know, in the night time, it's in a really interesting ambiance and the only primary light would be the moon, right? So I was playing with the background first because I needed to know what kind of colors I'll be using and I knew that I cannot really use bright colors like the skin tone couldn't be really orangey none of the colors would be the same color that are in real life or that would appear in real natural lighting so i was really playing around with the levels trying to find a nice you know contrasty color with the blue of the background and the darkness of the background and <laughs> don't <laughs> Don't panic, it's fine, it's fine, it's not your PC that is blue screening, it's mine. And that's because it actually happened three freaking times while I was trying to record this video. Why? I was so frustrated. It happened three times, every time I started to record again and do the footage. <sighs> but whatever, let's take a deep breath. I didn't lose much, I lose like about an hour worth of footage but that's okay at least we can take a breather and you know let, let me just show you the techniques i was employing in this one you basically need to know three rules and these three rules i learned while i was studying 3d design um for two years and yeah that's crazy i know but i'm not gonna talk about it right Anyway, I just want to flex on you with my first redraw, I think. Can I call it like that? Whatever. So here's the first drawing that I ever, uh, well, not the first drawing, but the first, you know, redraw Gary and the family. And I was trying to see if I can make it better. I didn't record it, of course, but let me show you the finished product. 
and this is the finished one isn't it just so much better than the first one like from this one to this one dang that's major improvement i mean you can let me just zoom out a little bit so you would see it better like composition wise it's way better lighting wise well i'm not even gonna mention it and you know just selling the piece it just it just works so what i used here i you just need three basic rules for this first rule being sketch and composition second one tone and style and third one my favorite one it's just ambient occlusion let me let me just bring you back to the basics first rule sketch and composition exactly i had to work with this one uh with this drawing it was kind of composition wise it wasn't cropped too properly the characters didn't really look too good oh by the way if you were wondering this was done in fire alpaca a free software and f the first thing i needed to to redo was to figure out the sketching right like where the eye lines are how the characters work together how the torso is and that's what 3d really helped me with because you have to visualize it in a 3d plane right like where the shoulder is in the back of because you know siri obscures this whole part so you can't really see what um, where Geralt's other shoulder would be and that's why I had his hand here, which doesn't really work, right? Like, it doesn't really, it's not natural for him to put his hand there while, you know, his torso is in this position. And therefore, in the finished one, you can see that I moved his hand here, because it would be more natural to him to grab the hand, to grab... Uh, Yennefer instead of Siri, and that would make more sense for Geralt to do that. Also, you can see that I switched up a little bit the proportions. So I have Siri and I have Yennefer's block out sketches, and this really helped me to get a grip of the 3Dness of the piece. Like I can totally see where each of the character is and it would it was way nicer to think of the composition and um, of the whole drawing overall. So yeah, don't forget, have nice sketches and think from the beginning of the composition of the piece because then you can just, you know, slide everything in together. It really depends on uh, what you're drawing. Man, this really is turning into a tutorial, isn't it? I really don't want it to. Anyway, number two, tone and style. So after you have the sketch, right? I just, you just plop on some color. And this is where the second stage came in, right? Tone and style. The first style, as you saw, was line worky and it had, it had flat coloring. So yeah, you really need to uh, know you know, your skin tones, your dark tones, your darkest tone, and um, just find a really good balance between uh, what you want to represent and what you want your style to be. And I didn't want to have the line style, right? I didn't want to have like harsh outlines because that's just not how it works. In real life, you don't see outlines unless you're watching a cartoon, but you don't see outlines on people, you just see you know the contrast between their being and the background so that was a bit hard to figure out anyway after the sketch was done you reposition them crop them really nicely and then the main step is to figure out your background which is this <laughs> this was my first attempt of clouds right i don't know how to draw clouds i'm not good with backgrounds but this is a story for another time so i took one from the game right i took this one because this one is just so pretty and then i added just a little bit of you know coloring and plopped on my characters and this is how it looks like right not too bad not i mean it's way better than it actually was Geralt looks not like Geralt, but you know it's there you can kind of sell the story and this is where my favorite favorite part comes in 
this could have been it, right? Like, there's a really good geometry, right? Like, you can see that this is going this way. Like, this is totally obscured in shadow and this is like his shoulder area. And you can see that this is going this way, right? You can see the geometry of how the fur is being obscured here by um, the shadow. You can see that there's uh, he, series corset is like going like this right and all that this is like shadow area light is not gonna per protrude here too much and you can see um, really good crazy things right I know it's crazy over here right crazy time anyway <laughs> my favorite thing that I learned from 3D was ambient occlusion. If you don't know what ambient occlusion is, it's basically just what I told you now. It's shadows in real life. All right, let, let me just boil it down for you. So we have a motorcycle here, right? In 3D, isn't that crazy? A 3D motorcycle, wow. There's like color, there's like detail, but there's, you know, just enough detail to sell it. You can see that the light doesn't really protrude in the more intricate parts right let me just remove a couple of parts to show you what i mean so we're left with the motorcycle right let me take some aesthetic parts off of it so you would understand what i'm talking about and we are left with the blank model right this is like a 3d model without any texturing right it's just there it's nothing too crazy you can still see you can still see a couple of details, but not everything uh, is there, right? Let me show you what ambient occlusion does. Bam! Did you see that? I mean, do you see the difference? Check this out. Off, on, off, on. This is what ambient occlusion does, right? So you have ambient light that is surrounding like, you know, a global illumination situation. Like when you go outside, right? There are shadows where there all, are always shadows, basically in cavities and, you know, places in nooks and crannies where light cannot go unless, you know, shine a flashlight on it. The shadow is always going to be there. That's why there, there are like shadows in the little motor parts, right? In underneath the uh, seat, because light doesn't really get there. Even though light, you know, bounces around, it, for the light it would be really hard to get there. And this is what ambient occlusion basically does, right? If you remove it, it's bland, it's boring, it doesn't really sell the fact that it's in, you know, in real life, right? But if you add some ambient occlusion on it, bam, it even though it's not colored it looks like a genuine thing that is real you want to sell the fact that is real right so that's what i did with my drawing i could have stopped here but i didn't and i added some ambient occlusion meaning that i was taking into the consideration that the light and the sky is a bit you know pinkish it's sundown of course and after i was thinking over the ambient occlusion thing bam this is my final, final piece. Isn't that just so much better than this one? I mean, let me just zoom in for a second. Right? You can definitely sell the shadows. Also, I, was, I, I cropped it a little bit in, so that's why it's jiggling a bit. But you can just see how much of a difference just a little thing, a little contrast makes. Whew. Anyway, that was a hassle to explain. <laughs> I'm sorry if it took this long, but let's get back to drawing. Whew. Sorry guys, I just needed just a little break because my PC kept on <laughs> dying and doesn't matter baby, we are back. So I was just employing these three little rules that I learned from my 3D endeavors before and that's what really sells a piece in my opinion. That's why you really need to know first where your character is 
and how you can make him pop a little bit so you have to draw with environment in mind even though it's just one character making him be a part of the environment would definitely make your drawing piece hundreds if not thousands of times better so I was just doing that, just that because it was a night nice scene. I was really working with the ambient occlusion with the contrast a lot. That's why Gary's right side of the face is completely blacked out, right? And I wanted to have like a nice glowing effect from his eyes. And because this is the Yurzine armor, the mastercrafted one, <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit of Witcher in my life, guys. All right, don't don't come at me, bros. <laughs> It's the mastercrafted Urzin armor, so the shoulder plates are made out of metal and that would serve as such a good contrast because it would just absorb or, you know, reflect the light and that's why making that look really good would really sell the fact that there's like a moon in the sky somewhere and there is fog that makes the light bounce around, right? So there's basically light coming from all directions that's why i added a little bit of highlight even though it should be in shadow i added a little bit of highlight on his right side of the face and yeah working with all of this in mind having a nice uh, well-defined sketch at the beginning working your way up to a nice composition a nice cropping so that it wouldn't look like a really boring you know just a deposing character and then finishing it all off with uh, the little details meaning you add a little bit of shadows where where shadows needs to be highlights and you know make the ambient occlusion work because ambient occlusion would sell any good picture like if you play League of Legends or any game and you see those, you know, splash art artworks, they use ambient occlusion like crazy. <sighs> but anyway, this was just me basically freaking out about ambient occlusion and, you know, trying my best at drawing a foggy, interesting, greedy look for Gary with not a lot of lighting, right? Because you just have the moon. But anyway, that was enough of me rambling this is the end piece i just you know added some diesel dazzle schnizzle schnazzle some salt bay on that bish you know crazy times and i think it turned out way better than the original one <laughs> of course the original one was so bad but hey anyway i just wanted to flex on you all right <laughs> here's a side by side the original one of course it's bad and I didn't know how to do backgrounds, but now I kinda know the trees look way better. I really like the night setting. And let me know what you thought. If you thought that this was in entertaining or interesting, or if you want to make an actual tutorial, which I will never, never do, or maybe, but never, I don't know how to teach. <laughs> Basically, this is the closest video you'll get to a tutorial, but um, Hey, let me know what you thought of this drawing. Let me know what you thought of my first redraw. Maybe I'll redraw it again. Maybe not. All right. Take care. Hope everything is okay. If not, everything will be okay. Consider liking it, subscribing, share it. I'll appreciate it a lot. And all right. Have a good night or a good day or a good week. Take care. Okay. Talk to you. Bye. Bye-bye.